Hey everybody and welcome. Sledding season is here, so that means you guys have the privilege of having more sled videos more often here on this channel. Uh, I just turned on the heat in the garage here, so it's still a little chilly. I'm working with like four or five different color temperatures of lights as well as using a new camera. So I got like natural lighting and LED and incandescent to fluorescent and a whole bunch of, like one's an LED, one's a fluorescent light. So I probably look like super blue and then everything else in the back probably looks okay. Uh, anyway, this is what you get today. You guys remember I blew up my clutch on my white M8 last season. So it's time to talk about it and I'll show you why these Arctic drive clutches are such just pieces of garbage and why I've gone through three already. We'll go over the M8 now and we'll start by getting the old clutch off. I have the fuller right here. So we're gonna smack that with impact. Uh, I'll quickly show you how to pull these clutches off with the proper puller and uh, we'll have a look at um, this clutch here and see exactly what failed on it. So obviously I've already been working on this thing. I've already had that uh, the, the outer clutch face off uh, the outer plate. So now I'm just taking out the T60 that holds this clutch on. And then after that, we're gonna have to get to pulling. Just threading in my puller now. I like to go as far as I can by hand. Sometimes she just needs a little bit of motivation just to get her off. Okay, we have our clutch off. We will bring you over to our workbench over there and I'll show you what the deal is, what happened with this one and why it needs to be replaced. Oh, okay, so there's our old clutch, old plate. Um, one of the reasons why these are super common failure and I'm sure it's gonna do it if I hit this with air, is just them getting dirty. This one wasn't that bad, but I've had some that were just absolutely terrible. So this one isn't that bad. Um, this is our old clutch, and I'll show you exactly what happened because um, it's pretty common on these clutches for this kind of failure. And I'll actually even rattle this one apart real quick, just so you can see exactly what's going on in there. So these clutches are timed which means that they have to be assembled a certain way um, because this faceplate will physically fit on in any direction. This right here, it'll go on. This will go on anyway, but they are timed because uh, they are weighted. And actually, right there, these are the factory timing marks. The reason these are timed is actually because of the weight. So they have to be a balanced clutch to get uh, the optimum performance out of them and as well as they're not wobbling around because they're out of weight. It's just like tires on a car, like a tire on a car has to be balanced. Same thing here. Um, that's actually what these drill holes here are for. That's, that's part of balancing the clutch right there. Uh, so you may see like two or three and they're always gonna be in different spots. Even this one, slightly different place uh, as well as you should see them on a secondary clutch too. Yeah, secondary clutch right here. So on this one, the timing marks are kind of hard to see. So I'm just gonna quickly mark it real quick for myself. I can see how this is supposed to go on. And now for this one, you can use a clutch compressor. Uh, I usually don't, just to save you time. You just gotta be careful with it when you're taking it apart. You see right there as I'm taking out the last one, right as I take out that last one, it really wants to spring up on me. So here we go. Here's the inner machinations of our good clutch. I should actually take a look at the other spring and see which spring is better because these springs actually have a, um, a specification for the spring free length. I'm not really too concerned about it right now. We're gonna check the weights and make sure the weights are what we need uh, from clutch to clutch and make sure they're calibrated properly. So there is a bunch of things that we should be checking and we're going to. Okay, so good clutch here. Bad clutch there. And I'll get the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see what exactly I'm talking about here. On my last clutch, I had a spider failure. 
So right in here, it was actually on the other side, it was on the inside of this spider that it failed, but there was a crack right along, right in there, which caused the sheaves to actually move closer together. That's not what happened this time. And people are giving me a hard time about, oh, your belt deflection's too tight, your belt deflection's wrong. No, the, the primary clutch was cracked. Um, if I have a clip, I'll, uh, if I can find the clip, I'll actually uh, show you what happened on that one, because uh, this one's a little different. The spider looks to be in good shape. It doesn't look like anything's actually wrong with the spider itself, which is somewhat common. I think these clutches get too hot. I don't think he did this one in. I think this one just got dirty and I just wasn't on top of it the way I usually am and the way I should be. The weight springs up. So there, there's the weight going up. Wait on this one, it's in good shape. It's got a little bit of grooving in it, but it's really minor. Not worried about that one. Have another roller, a roller here, a little bit of play, pretty minor. That one's actually not in bad shape. It does have a little scuffing on one point, but overall the side to side play is pretty normal in those. And it's rolling just fine. So let's move on to the next one. We're now looking at a different roller. Same with this one. This one's fine. Uh, this one's sticking a little bit. See, that one's a little sticky. Yeah, it's sticking right there. Little sticky. You could probably get some more use out of it though. And our weight, let's check that. See the raceway on our weight, it's nice and smooth. There's really small grooving, but nothing we're really concerned about. And let's get on to the last one, our, our problem child of the bunch here. You can see that this weight, or this roller here, has a ton of play in it. Like it's sticking every time I try to move it. It's actually contacting the clutch body itself. Back there, the spider I should say, the spider itself. And I can't actually even roll it with my finger as well as the surface right here. It's all grooved up right there. All that surface, kind of hard to see because of the light, but I mean, you can see that you trying to turn it with my hand. I can't even turn it with my hand because it's contacting the spider. Let's see what happened there. All right, so here we got some problems. So you can see that this face of the weight is all beat up. There's a big groove right in the middle. This is the low spot of the groove right there. Um, it's actually maybe down even like a quarter of an inch right there compared to here and here. So what caused this failure was that this bushing uh, started to stick. And it basically caused this weight to just start uh, wearing out in this spot, uh, specifically right here. Instead of rolling and actuating properly, it was just grinding against each other. So, oh, and I'm getting the focal. So you can replace the weight on this just fine. The weight's easy to replace. Um, it's this roller in here that is part of the spider and Cat doesn't make a rebuild kit to rebuild the spider. They do on older models. There's rebuild kits for these spiders on the older models but not on this one. So we will keep this one for parts, but we're gonna double check, we're gonna double check the, uh, the part numbers on the weights, and we're just gonna make sure that they match our new clutch, because we want everything to be calibrated properly. So I already inspected this clutch, but everything feels good. There's always gonna, there's always gonna be like a little bit of wobble. That's not bad, that's fine. Have a look at our weights. Weights look better than what I have. 670.65 on this one here. So we're just gonna double check that that's what we were running in our old clutch. This is a 68 gram weight. And on this one, we have a 65 gram weight. Okay, so I checked real quick here. The 68 gram weights, uh, Articat's telling me, are for the six to 9,000 feet the 65 actually fall into a category that would actually be higher than that, but also include some of that. So we're gonna run the 65s and we're going to see what they do for us. A lot of people have actually been switching over to us. It might actually make for a little bit easier engagement. So let's give them a shot. Let's, let's see what they do for us. All right, the girl's all cleaned up now. She's looking pretty good. We are not going to screw with um, the calibration at all in this thing. Uh, because if it's got a different spring for the weights, we don't want to change that. So we're just going to leave it as is, and we're gonna pop this back together real quick here. Now this is where you could definitely use a clutch compressor 
But uh, we're not going to be doing that today, mostly because I don't have one. Uh, but there is ways around it. Okay, so our clutch is tentatively back together. Now, this is where people are gonna yell at me and say, oh, you're gonna wreck the clutch butching, man. You don't wanna do it that way. Um, just don't get greedy with it. Just go one corner at a time and just give her a few pulls and, and just, just don't get greedy with it. Just go back and forth. Just gonna go back and forth. You don't gotta kill him. Just get it nice and tight. I always go with my fist, like this, and kind of, yeah, that one's good. Yeah, just like that. There's kind of a nice way to check your work on these clutches, is just kind of get down on it and make sure that everything's nice and smooth, which it is on this one. But so watch your fingers in here, because that's this is where those dogs come up right there. The weights come up and drop, so you don't want to want to have your finger in there. But uh, yeah, it's feeling, it's feeling good, it's feeling nice. So this actually is ready to go back on. All right, so old clutch here, piece of junk that we're gonna keep for parts and beautiful new clutch. Have our bolt, make sure we have the washer on the end of it. I'm just gonna start with it by hand. I'm gonna start it with my fingers. Definitely don't wanna go right to impact on this. I'm actually just going to use a small impact driver just to save me a little bit of time. Go until she's snug up. Beautiful right there. And now we're gonna torque this thing up. All right, that's all I got for this video. That's all we're doing today. Uh, I wanna thank my friends at Slide Parlor once again. Link is down in the description below if you're looking for something uh, that's a little older parts uh, that you're having trouble finding new. They are the place to go. We're gonna be doing some venting in this side panel just to help keep that clutch clean make it last a little bit longer. Uh, I don't have time to do that today, but uh, I'm sure there's more things wrong with that sled that uh, in the next day or two that we're gonna be going over. We're gonna check the reeds. Uh, we're just gonna be doing a full service and make sure that it's ready to go through the season. We're gonna be looking over our secondary, which uh, is probably the most neglected part of a snowmobile, but uh, really it is probably the most durable. Like not, not a lot really happens in these uh, old Arctic, Arctic drive secondaries. They're actually uh, a pretty, uh, pretty reliable clutch, which is saying a lot because their primary sucks. That's it for today. If you like this video and you actually found it helpful, leave a like. If you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a like down below and I'll see you in the next one. Cut off a big, big slab of avalanche beside me here. Holy smokes. Yeah, there's your weak layer right there. Here I am. You got your beacon on, Ben? Yeah, leave it on. <laughs> leave it on, bud.